Good evening, everybody. Uh, my presentation this evening uh, provides um, some updates on some developments in relation to the regulatory framework uh, for credit unions over the past 12 months. So I'll just give you a quick overview of the presentation. So I begin the presentation uh, with an overview of some data uh, around the sector. Uh, I then speak about two uh, reviews of aspects of the regulatory framework that we undertook uh, in 2017. I'll give a brief update on the CUAC implementation group, uh, and then I'm going to finish uh, with just some comments around supporting materials available for credit unions. So. As I said, the first three slides uh, just provide uh, some data and some key trends uh, on, on the sector. And I've included these, I suppose, to provide some background or context for this evening's presentations and discussions. Uh, these may also be useful in terms of informing your own discussions uh, at the individual credit union level, and we'll include these slides in the pack. There'll also be further information um, on statistical information on trends uh, made available uh, to credit unions in the next edition of the statistical uh, release that we uh, make available to all credit unions. So as you can see here, I suppose at, at a very high level, uh, the top graph here illustrates uh, first off the increase in sector assets that we've seen um, over the last the last five years. Uh, I suppose some uh, stabilisation in the loan to asset ratio, uh, so still uh, standing there at around 27%. Um, which I suppose, given the increase uh, in assets, uh, reflects some increase uh, in, in savings. The uh, diagram on the bottom of the slide is there to illustrate the shifts or changes uh, in asset size in the sector. So I suppose the key trend that emerges there is the increase in the number of larger credit unions. So at this stage, uh, credit unions with assets over 100 million uh, represent uh, over 50% of sector total assets. Uh, the next slide, and I know these will be difficult to read, these are more, I suppose, for uh, reviewing uh, back at the credit union. But I suppose, again, this illustrates trends in terms of income uh, and expenses uh, in, uh, across the sector uh, and the impact that that has had uh, in terms of average dividend uh, paid over the last five years. Uh, and the final data slide uh, provides us a bit more information in terms of trends, again, uh, in relation to new lending advanced uh, and also in relation to sector savings. Savings. So again, you can see uh, some uptick uh, in, in lending in, in, in more recent years, uh, but I suppose at, at a relatively slow rate. Also demonstrates uh, some increase uh, in average loan size. Uh, and just again, uh, in relation to savings, uh, just that continuation of the trend uh, for, for <coughs> in increase in savings across the sector. So moving now to our review work, and as I mentioned, uh, in 2017 we've undertaken uh, two reviews of key aspects of the regulatory framework for credit unions, and they relate to investments and F&P. So uh, the next few slides focus on the review work that we undertook in relation to the investment framework. Uh, and our key goal in undertaking the review is to ensure uh, you know, that this aspect of the regulatory framework remains uh, appropriate. Uh, I suppose it again demonstrates or highlights uh, the flexibility that is provided through the provision of regulation making powers uh, to the central bank. I set out on the slide uh, the key factors that we took into account uh, in undertaking the review and uh, Ed in his opening remarks has, has touched on some of these already so I suppose key areas that informed us were uh, you know, the objects of a credit union, our own statutory mandate, the current makeup of uh, investments and proposals being brought forward by the sector. And the above all inform uh, the appropriate level of investment risk that a credit union uh, should be permitted to take. So this slide uh, just, I suppose, illustrates some of the trends we identified in our review work. So, uh, and these reflect some of those trends that were illustrated in those earlier slides. So that growth in sector assets, the decline in the sector loan to asset ratio, um, increasing exposure to accounts and authorised uh, credit institutions or deposits uh, and bank bonds, uh, overall falling investment income, um, a, a general increase in the maturity profile of investments, and in relation to counterparty exposure, a large proportion of investments to a relatively small number of counterparties. Uh, and the pie chart there on the slide uh, just gives a snapshot of the current uh, makeup of sector investments. So you can see that, that, that high concentration in terms of bank deposits uh, and bank bonds. 
So following uh, our internal work, we published our consultation paper, uh, CP109, um, and in this we indicated that we were considering uh, adding some additional investment classes uh, for credit unions, and these were uh, bonds issued by supranational entities, corporate bonds, and investment in tier three uh, approved housing bodies, which would facilitate the provision of funding uh, for social housing. Uh, in addition, there was also uh, proposals around an amendment to, to the counterparty uh, uh, limit uh, for credit unions. So as I mentioned, uh, this paper was published in May. The consultation period closed at the end of June. Uh, we received 74 uh, submissions, which I think is testament to the level of interest that there is uh, in, in this uh, aspect of the regulatory framework. Um, our goal, as uh, Ed mentioned, is to publish a feedback statement um, and final uh, regulations uh, in, in the coming weeks. Uh, our next step on this uh, will be the statutory consultation uh, that we are required to undertake. Um, and our intention would be to uh, commence the regulations uh, in early 2018. So I suppose just some final comments in relation uh, to investments. Uh, broadly, the central bank is supportive of credit unions increasing their investment options, uh, and this would include through potentially uh, playing a role in the provision of funding for social housing. Uh, but I suppose this is against that backdrop of you know what is a, an appropriate level of risk for a credit union portfolio, uh, and that underlying uh, I suppose fundamental concept that it is the members' funds uh, that are ultimately uh, being invested. And I just wanted to take the opportunity this evening uh, just to mention something in, in relation to, to MIFID. This is something we have touched on uh, before, but I thought it was a good opportunity when talking about investments to highlight it again. So under MIFID, there are uh, certain obligations on um, investment firms uh, when providing services uh, to investors such as yourselves. Uh, and under uh, MIFID, investors uh, are classified or categorised as retail clients or professional clients. Now, clients are automatically categorised as professional, but may opt to be uh, categorised as retail. And I suppose just something to be aware is that a retail investor uh, is afforded additional uh, protections. Something else in relation to MIFID is um, from the 3rd of January 2018, MIFID will be replaced by MIFID II. Uh, now, from a credit union perspective, uh, I mean, this to an extent is, is, is good news in that it will introduce um, additional uh, protection and transparency uh, around fees, etc for uh, investors. So it was just something to be aware of uh, in terms of your, your investment space. So moving then to our review of the fitness and probity regime, and I, I won't uh, linger too long on this slide. This is really a recap in terms of the introduction of the tailored fitness and probity regime for credit unions that was introduced on a phased basis beginning in 2013. So I suppose there was enough number of key differences between the credit union regime and the regime applying to all other regulated financial service providers. I suppose the key one being the two specific credit union pre-approval control functions. Uh, so there are 46 pre-approval control functions for other regulated financial services providers. For for credit unions, uh, I suppose the focus is on those, or is currently on those key roles of the, the manager and chair. So in terms of the review, again, you know, the ultimate objective is ensuring that the, the regime remains uh, appropriate. Uh, I suppose we are informed by a number of factors uh, in, in our review, and they include, it, I suppose, the recent developments in the sector that would include uh, restructuring and the change in, in asset size, our findings from themed inspections, and also our findings through our supervisory uh, engagement with credit unions. So again, uh, we have published a consultation paper uh, in relation to this, uh, and it sets out uh, our proposal, and I suppose in the first instance, our, our view that a tailored regime for credit unions uh, remains appropriate, that now is not the time uh, to fully align uh, the regime with the regime applying to other uh, financial services providers. Uh, the consultation paper uh, includes a proposal around introducing three additional pre-approval control functions for credit unions with assets over 100 million and these will be the Risk Management Officer, the Head of Internal Audit and the Head of Finance. 
Um, and the next slide, I suppose, is focusing on the rationale or the reason why those uh, roles have been uh, chosen. And I suppose, essentially, we would see that these are roles that have the potential to play a key role in embedding uh, the restructuring that has uh, been ongoing in, in the sector and also can play a key role in terms of laying down those foundations that are necessary to facilitate uh, development uh, across the sector. Um, and that's in terms of you know, appropriate risk management systems, <coughs> controls, uh, and all those, uh, you know, I suppose, key elements that, that are necessary uh, to support uh, development in the sector. So just in terms of next steps, uh, we're very close to the closing of that uh, consultation. Uh, so it's due to close uh, on the 10th of November. Uh, our goal would be uh, to have reviewed uh, all submissions and to publish a, a feedback statement uh, in quarter one, 2018. Uh, and we'll articulate our timing around any proposed, or sorry, any finalised changes at that stage. But that will be informed by the feedback we receive in, in the course of the consultation. Um, I won't go through all of this slide. This was just, uh, I suppose, to take the opportunity to provide some um, reminders in relation to FMP just as we uh, approach the uh, AGM uh, season. So just in terms of uh, submission of, of IQs uh, for those pre-approval control functions. But we'll include that in the pack so you can uh, review that at your, at your leisure. So a quick uh, update just in relation to uh, CUAC and the implementation group. So you will remember uh, that CUAC presented on its review of the implementation of the Commission on Credit Unions uh, recommendations uh, back in June last year. Uh, it set out a number of recommendations and I've set out the, the areas on the slide there. Uh, one of the recommendations was that an implementation group be established to oversee uh, the implementation of those recommendations uh, on the slide. Uh, and it was uh, recommended that this group would consist of uh, representative bodies, uh, representative from the central bank, department of finance, and, and a CUAC representative. So that group uh, was established earlier this year. Uh, the group is uh, up, up and running and active, uh, and I suppose the, the central bank certainly welcomes uh, the opportunity to participate and input into that group. And just one final slide. Uh, I suppose, again, just to take the opportunity uh, to talk a little bit about uh, some of the, the supporting material that is available on the central bank website. So the handbook uh, remains there, <coughs> our FAQ documents there are, remain there, and these are things that we do continuously update. We will update them uh, to reflect changes uh, that we introduce around uh, investments or, or FMP. Um, I suppose to highlight that the central bank website was updated uh, in 2017, so uh, potentially worth a look. And I suppose just to reiterate that we are open to feedback uh, around the communications that we make available. If people do have suggestions uh, around you know, documents that they think they, that will be useful or would assist them, uh, we're certainly always open uh, to hearing that. So that brings me to the end of my presentation and I'm going to hand you over to, to Pierce to give an overview on the supervisory side. Thank you.